I know many of you are continuing on next the Prestige Speaker Series. You'll be additional. Feel free to help yourself now. Um, I'm Debbie Day. I'm Advanced Director for Nursing Science <laughs> of Professions, and I have the privilege of working with donors, of with volunteer leadership, and alumni to the colleges of nursing and sciences and health professions. So first, we're going to have a quick welcome from the dean, um, and then I'll be back in a few moments. Thank you, Meredith Bond. <coughs> Welcome everybody. This is a wonderful turnout, a wonderful crowd uh, for a very special event. Um, this is really a, a, a great way to come together and to honor Diane Cherry. And I know that many of you, not all the students, but some of you who are faculty now uh, knew Diane when she was here. Uh, I think it's clear to say this program uh, has benefited enormously by her contribution and has grown and continues as wonderful students, wonderful faculty. So we're excited to have uh, Dan and Katie here to visit. Uh, I understand that Dan is coming back and forth to Cleveland for business purposes, but it's probably the first time he's stepped inside this wonderful new building. And uh, as Dan was saying, Cleveland State looks quite a bit different to, to what it did 20 or 25 years ago. So again, uh, a real warm welcome to Dan and Katie and to all of you for coming to uh, celebrate this very, very special occasion with us. Thank you. So I had the honor and the pleasure of meeting with Dan Cherry last year in Chicago. And as many of you know, the Diane Cherry Award has been a long-standing award given to a last year student in the program, nominated by peers for leadership potential. And many of you, thank you so much, many of you have contributed to this fund over the years. And it never was endowed, and um, so its future was not guaranteed until I went to talk with Dan and asked if he would consider endowing this gift. And what he shared with me is, he said, I've been thinking about this for years. He said, thank you for asking me and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, Dan and your family, Katie and Matt, thank you for giving us this opportunity. For the students, and thank you for allowing us to remember Diane here for many, many years at Cleveland State. Okay, um, I do have some things that I want to share with you before we have some people come up and share their memories of Diane. Um, the Diane Cherry room is right back here behind us, and so before you go, please be sure to visit the room. And we do have we do have some take behind gifts for you to take home: a bookmark and also a coaster that was made for the dedication of this building. And so today, a few people will share memories of Diane, and I won't introduce um, with long resumes because I know you know them well. Um, both Mary Miladonis and Anne Reinfall know Diane as a colleague, a practitioner, a, a faculty member, an educator, and a friend. So they will come up and share some memories, and then Dan will also share some remembrances of Diane. So Anne and Mary. You know I'm having mic problems some of the second years in the audience this semester. Um, Diane is probably part of the reason I'm here today. I first met her when she contacted me to be a part-time instructor when I was a young clinician. And I went on to teach in her class for a couple of years and then when she moved to Chicago, um, along with a couple of other colleagues, inherited her class as part-timers that first summer. And I also inherited um, one of the patients on her private caseload when she left town. And through that, met one of her very good friends, Linda Moeller-Mansour, who could not be here today and is very sorry about that. But I've got a story from Linda about Diane that I wanted to share. And Linda was a student of Diane's um, when she taught in was it Boston. And Linda came into the program at the last minute and 
didn't have all the prereqs and was taking gross anatomy in Diane's class. And when Diane found out that she was commuting two hours every night to school, she got very worried and offered her the opportunity to sleep on her couch during the weekdays so that she would have adequate time to study. Well, Linda happens to be an excellent cook, and Diane never liked to cook that much. So when, when Diane found out that Linda could cook, she said, well, if you cook, I'll buy the groceries. And at that point, Linda was a poor PT student. Some of you can identify with that in the audience. And so she took the opportunity of doing that. What she didn't quite count on was that every minute she was busy cooking and they were at home, she was getting quizzed on gross anatomy. <laughs> and she got one of two A's in a class of 32 because of that. And I think that story shows the kind of person Diane was. So that's what I wanted to share. Hi, uh, I think everybody here knows me. My name is Mary Melodonis, so and I'm a faculty in the Dr. Crystal Baird program. My remarks are a little bit more formal so that I can help share with you the legacy that Diane has left us here at Cleveland State. I was one of her students, she was my research mentor, and she was very instrumental at several points in my life and I'm grateful to her. And the memory that we get to spring forward to help students into the future. So again, I want to express my appreciation to everybody here today to celebrate Diane Cherry. When I think of Diane, I think of a master teacher, a founding leader, and an expert mentor. She embodied the qualities of integrity, creativity, and humanism. Her passion for teaching was a beacon in many students' lives. Her seminal leadership created a lasting footprint for both developing professionals and a developing profession. The pediatric section of the American Physical Therapy Association honors her memory every year at an annual forum. Her influence knows no bounds. Just last year, students from the Occupational Therapy Program in Switzerland contacted me about her work. Most importantly, the scholarship that is being endowed here today will carry on her legacy of leadership and service, motivation, and professionalism in our future physical therapist at Cleveland State University. I'm grateful to Dan and Katie and Michael uh, for their generosity, which will help fulfill many students' professional hopes and wishes. Diane was my teacher, a research and a research mentor of mine at Cleveland State University. Her smile was infectious. Her teaching was both captivating and demanding. Her hallmark as a teacher was her ability to empower students to understand the complexities of kinesiology, neuroscience, lifespan, and professional development. I was so fortunate to have Diane present at key professional transitions in my life, for which I am very grateful. Diane's legacy embodies the ideal of, of the building we are standing in today, interprofessional education. Her last publication in the Journal of Physical and Occupational Therapy and Pediatrics describes a model that is relevant to both physical and occupational therapists and beyond. The model can be used by professionals in hospitals, rehabilitation centers, schools, and service agencies. It was recently utilized in several textbooks, including Advances in Reducing Health Disparities and Occupational Therapy for Children and Adolescents. It is Diane's enduring humanism that we look to for inspiration. Her wonderful ability to spread passion and creativity in her patients students, colleagues, and friends will be long remembered. Again, we are sincerely grateful to Dan and Katie for your generosity in keeping these ideals pouring forth as a powerful beacon for the students that travel through these hallways. We will always cherish her legacy and the impact she had on our community. Thank you all for coming. I think the first impression anyone got is of somebody with immense amount of energy. 
I remember when a college classmate visited us when he got the barge. And he said, my goodness, Diane has enough energy to play in the whole city. <laughs> and uh, I was also remembering as we came out here. While we lived out in Orange, and she was on the faculty here, she also saw uh, patients from time to time. We would come to the house. And I particularly remember a little boy who you know, had all kinds of root defects. And uh, it was heartbreaking when he came because he had a disfigurement. His nose was in the middle of his forehead. So I want you to imagine that that demand of his parents also, any professional who dealt with them, to see beyond it, to the human being that's really there. But that was Diane, too. But you don't think my report. I'm not an objective observer. <laughs> So, this is from an editorial that appeared in the fall of 1999 in the Pediatric Physical Therapy Journal. The author said, a teacher is one who instructs by precept, example, or experience. Diane Cherry is one of those rare individuals who instructed through all of these moments. From the early days of teaching at Simmons, Diane seized any and all opportunities to instill passion for pediatric physical therapy in her students. In clinical practice, she used her passion to make a difference in each child's life because she cared about each and every one. Her involvement in the section of pediatrics exemplified the leadership skills of our profession. Her goal of giving direction to the Education Committee, making it an important and influential force within the section of the profession, is being realized in part of the publication of this edition. Her unwavering desire to improve the education of the pediatric physical therapist shaped her contribution to the profession. Now, a little earlier than that, the first Diane B. Cherry Award was awarded to a student here at CSU. And at the uh, ceremony, Nancy Papp had a few things to say about the award. Diane had an implicit belief in physical therapy and its value for children. From the beginning of her career, she specialized in pediatric physical therapy and became a recognized expert, an expert teacher in this area. She was a teacher without peers. She expected more of her students than they could possibly give. Yet her influence was so great that students were able to achieve considerably above their own expectations. Despite the limitations of a cold gym, poor lighting, and a general dismal environment, something that we don't have to contend with anymore. <laughs> Diane believed in the program at CSU. She taught here for 13 years, and as with all aspects of her life, she put everything she had into being the best teacher in the world while she could be. If Diane were here, she'd be really touched to have this kind of work for me to have to her. Not, not because of herself, or she, she wasn't the type. You ought to teach and seek personal honors. It's rather because this embodies the chance for students to learn to do what she did, which is about care for people in need. So thank you very much for this effort. toast together. Thank you for being such a big crowd, but please have patience. I think we're going to be passing out champagne over the next few moments. 
So thank you for coming. Please do enjoy champagne, help yourself to the refreshments. And for most of you, um, we'll see you at the prestige speaker. Thank you.